In this video I want to add a panda bear into this scene sitting next to the person in the room and both the images I'm using came off the internet and unfortunately this one has got a lot of clutter in it but that's usually the way it is with composites it's not unless you take the shots yourself I guess it's very difficult to to um, get the the images the way that you really want them and to make the job easier so I'm gonna have to get rid of uh, a lot of this clutter I want to get rid of this grill on the left hand side these light receptacles and of course these large cushions which I don't know why they're there but uh, really uh, they're gonna be right where the uh, bear needs to be so first thing that uh, I want to do is like I said get rid of the grill so I'm going to uh, zoom in on the grill and I'm going to use my spacebar and the command key to zoom in and work on the grill and I'm either uh, going to use content aware to get rid of this or I might use the patch tool but often especially with the patch tool if I use that I'm gonna have a, a smearing problem between the baseboard and the grill so what I'm gonna do is get my marquee tool and by hitting M and I'm going to um, marquee an area above the grill and part of the baseboard then I'm going to hit command T to get the transform controls and just stretch that out and hit return to accept that command D to deselect so now I've got some separation there I've got a little mark here by his knee so go L get my lasso and we'll just get rid of that with shift delete to bring up content aware and hit OK so now I'll uh, use the spacebar an option zoom out and uh, I'll use my marquee tool again I think just to go around here although it's not square but be close enough and let's try content aware shift delete and return and see what that does well not bad but not perfect so I'm going to my patch tool and make a selection around there drag it up here and the patch tool usually a few kind of marks here so we'll just mix that up a little bit and that's that's looking fairly good so the next thing I want to do is uh, clean up the floor a little and get rid of these receptacles so once again we'll zoom in quite far I'll get my lasso tool again get rid of those shift delete hit return they're gone and uh, little bit of a mark here so see if we can get rid of that right. maybe we have to go back to the patch tool yeah that seems to clean that up we'll do these marks on the floor here so go back to my lasso content aware to get rid of those and we'll see how content aware does on that and eh, that's good enough so we'll zoom out again and we've cleaned that part up but we've still got a big problem with these cushions so 
it's always uh, hard to figure out which is the, the best way to go about things so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select a person roughly uh, off the uh, off here and put him on a separate layer then I'll see if I can get rid of the cushions so um, I'm going to I've already got my uh, lasso tool so I'm going to hold the shift key hit L again till I get my magnetic lasso we'll zoom in and we'll start up here in the hair this is a fairly easy selection I'm not really worried about down the bottom here but what I do need to do is probably go up reasonably high and come back here and maybe actually I should take a little more in there so Maybe I'll hold the shift key down, take a little more in here. Okay, we'll put him on his own layer, Command J, and we'll turn that off. Go back to the other layer and we'll zoom out. Okay, so I think what I'll do, I think I'll use a similar method as I used before. I'll get my marquee tool. And marquee an area with the, with the baseboard. I'm not, it's not going to work with the floor, so I'll just have to go down to the bottom of the baseboard. And I'm going to um, put that also on its own layer. Command J. So I'll go back in there, hold the Command key. So we make a selection, Command T, and we'll drag that over here somewhere and accept that. So we've got some color problems here but I think we can blend that in reasonably well and we'll just turn that back on I think we can blend that in reasonably well up the center there but I'll turn that off for now so I'm going to add a layer mask to this so I can see if we can blend it in but I'm going to turn this layer off and I'm just going to bring a guide in so that I got some idea where the uh, cushions are that I need to get rid of so turn that back on it doesn't give me a, a lot of room to uh, to play with but anyway we'll add a layer mask and I'm going to um, use the gradient tool I think to uh, to do this with so we'll switch the colors by hitting the X key and let's zoom out and see what we've got and time we get the the bear in here um, I think it's gonna look okay we can always do a little bit more work on there but I've still got all this to to deal with so that's gonna be another challenge I realized that this video is going to be quite long so I've fast forwarded um, but I will show the steps that I took so what I need to do is to cover this area here with the cushions up although most of this and the back of this person will be covered by the bear uh, I still think I need to get rid of this area here so what I did is I made a selection of this cup and put it on its own layer. 
Then I took an area of the wood floor here and put it over here. So here's the the wood floor over here. But what I also did to get it to line up is put a black and white adjustment layer on there and clipped it in to that piece of flooring that I took from over here so that I could line up the uh, the grooves in the in the wood and I also reduced the opacity to about 68 percent so I could see what I was doing so I really don't need that layer but it was just there so that uh, I could uh, line it up and I can turn the cup layer back on so now we have our cup back now it is a little darker between here and there but I don't think that'll really matter because when the bear goes in there it probably would be a little bit darker here from the shadow and it is somewhat similar to the original so I'm going to kind of leave that for now so I can get rid of my black and white layer there and I'm just going to make a stamp visible layer of this and then I can start bring, bringing the bear into the image. So I'll go command option shift N and E to make a stamp visible layer. So now it's time to add the bear to the scene and if we look at this panda bear it uh, it's not uh, very well defined in the where the hairs on the edge especially around the white area here so after it's cut out it might not look uh, too good so I may have to uh, add some hairs on the outside with a brush but we'll see how this goes so the first thing I want to do is move it to the original image so I'm just going up to here and drop it in. Let's zoom in a little and put it maybe roughly where we want it. That's close enough I guess. zoom in a little more and I'm just going to use the uh, quick selection tool which is W on the keyboard and make a quick selection here and I think that's uh, close enough so now we go up to refined edge and I've got a radius already set from a previous uh, refined edge adjustment. So we'll just see how this starts to look, see if we can bring a little bit more of the fur into the image. It's always a kind of a fine line when we do this so we don't start to get artifacts showing up and we'll try to give it a little bit more decontaminate the colors this and sometimes make it worse which it already is I'm starting to lose some of these this up here so We'll take that back and maybe even my spot smart radius is too high. Well we'll we'll have a look at that and see if that's gonna work for us. So we'll click OK and see if we can move it into place here. I really don't know how big this bear should be really but I guess we'll go with the size that it is. It 
I guess they get quite big, doesn't look too bad. But what we do have is this kind of bad fringing down here, which I'd like to get rid of. So I'm going up to layer, down to matting, and color decontaminate. And take that up a little bit more. Have a look at the before and the after. This is the before. This is the after. Starting to get a few artifacts on, on this side here, but we can clean that up in the mask. But I think it looks better down this side. Maybe back it off a little. Okay. So maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more and do a little more work on the mask here. So I'll get my brush and see if we can get rid of a little bit more of this. And actually we need to use the other color and no that's not gonna work too good. I may have to put another mask on that. So we'll back out of that. We can clean that up afterwards anyway. So command zero to get back to full screen here. Okay, so now what I need to do is to get the cup back. So we'll take that up to the top of the stack. And we've got the cup back. So maybe we should move the the bear down a little bit closer to the to the straw here. That's going to kind of give me a bit of a problem with the with the person's head because it was kind of buried in the cushion there but uh, once again we can fix that up too so maybe that a, looks a little better right there so we'll go to the top layer and we'll do another stamp visible command option shift N and E now why I use N and E is why I make a new layer before I use E to merge it all down is that sometimes when you're using a blend mode or an opacity then that stays on the final layer when you've merged it down but if you make a new layer then you kind of start off fresh and you don't have any problem with anything like the opacity or blending mode to deal with. Most of the time you don't need it but I've got into a habit of just doing it all the time and then I don't run into the problem. So there we are so now really what we need to do is a bunch of uh, cleanup and maybe add a little bit more hair around here with a brush. Now this is the hard part and that's adding shadows so this often takes a lot of time to get it right but I'll just go through a couple of things that I do to try and get a shadow that looks okay but it is a bit of a hit and miss operation and like I said it, I find it very difficult but anyway what I would do is make a new layer get my brush, hit the B key, pick up this color from the shadow over here and it's pretty much black in a way and I'm going to uh, start off with about 50% fill and start kind of brushing it in in this area here then I'll probably back it off maybe 20% start putting a little in here it looks uh, like I said pretty hit and miss but anyway what I would do now is double click on here to bring up layer styles 
and use the underlying layer hold down the option key and drag this across so that it starts to lighten it up a little bit maybe bring this this one over and then let's have a look at the before and the after this the before this the after maybe that's still a little bit on the heavy side and let's say OK so let's have a look at the the actual before and after this with the no shadow and this with some shadow so I think we've achieved something but like I said I'm always have problems with this and something that you have to do over and over until you get it right so what I would do now is make a copy of that command J and pretty much do the same thing click OK then I would put a layer mask on there and maybe use a gradient Let's use a, about a 40% gradient on here till we think it starts to fade out a bit and let's have a look at the before and the after there's the before this there's the after I'm kinda going to uh, leave it there for the reason as I said a guy would have to play this for a long while it would get awful boring watching this till I got something that I was happy with so now the uh, only thing I want to do is um, use the hairbrush as you can see I've kind of filled this person's hair in here where he was sitting up and his head was kind of squished into the cushion so I just filled that in with black and it really doesn't look that good so I'm going to um, use a hairbrush to um, see if we can add a little uh, texture to it a few loose kind of strands of hair and probably it should have a, a few highlights in here that we probably should bring in but we just show how the uh, hairbrush works so I have a, a brush like that loaded so I go up and get the brush and with this it's um, usually a trial and error thing again just like the shadows to you kinda get it right or looking right I'm gonna use uh, black um, because his hair is black but I could also change it to a gray and put a few streaks in here so that it makes it look a bit more realistic and you can do the same thing on the panda here but let's uh, I've got it on a, a separate new layer here so if it doesn't work you can just discard the layer and, and start again so let's go to see what's gonna happen here well that's pretty pretty wild hairdo but uh, so maybe we'll delete that one and make my brush a little smaller let's get a, another new layer and uh, make my brush a little smaller here and this where being artistic would uh, would help but unfortunately I don't have any of those skills but anyway as you can see the, the brush does work and you know, although it doesn't look great right now and like I said something you'd have to do several times you know, it does look uh, better than it did before so at least it looks a little bit more realistic so I think that's it's enough for this tutorial as it's kind of uh, dragged on